Um, thank you for joining this session. So my name is Masayoshi Ishikawa from Sony. Uh, so I'm so happy today, uh, here today, uh, because I, this is the first time for me to talk about uh, NAPTEX at the uh, Embedded Linux Conference in Europe. So um, today I'm going to talk about uh, NAPTEX for Embedded Linux developers. So uh, here is the agenda. Uh, so firstly, I introduce uh, um, about our audio products so based on NATX. After that, I talk about uh, some feasibility study so like uh, SMP, so symmetric multiprocessing, and also talk about um, porting the ABS uh, Alexa video service SD device SDK. Then I will introduce a Sony's process board, and finally I will talk about the NATX workshop so held in uh, Netherlands in July. And about me, um, so my technical background includes um, various fields such as uh, 3D graphics and then networking and embedded systems. And in uh, 2006, I proposed to use uh, Linux for a portable media project. And we started to develop um, the first Linux-based um, portable audio media project, uh, which supports a video playback. Then uh, in 2008, I propose to use uh, Android for a new generation of uh, media player, and we start to develop an Android-based uh, media player, which has a dual cortex A9. And since uh, 2013, I propose to use uh, NATX for small audio devices, so such as head-on ways of storage. So before studying NATX, um, I have little experience with artists. So actually, so I was an artist beginner at that time. So this slide shows a uh, um, brief introduction to NATX. And NATX was released in 2007 by uh, Gregory Nat. It's mostly POSIX Pong Band uh, real time OS, so it's suitable for uh, robotics. And actually, uh, in drone and uh, project and uh, ROS2 project, uh, which means uh, a sort of robot operating system, uh, so they are using NATX for uh, embedded uh, real time OS. And NATX supports many CPU uh, architectures from uh, 8 bit to 32 bit system. And footprint and runtime memory are very small, so it's suitable for uh, resource constrained devices. And as for a driver source code, uh, NATX does not use a vendor hire, so hardware abstraction layer. So the code is um, very straightforward and consistent. And many key features uh, are implemented, such as a flat file system and uh, SmartFS, which is a um, uh, flash file system with uh, wire labeling support and networking and many USB class driver for both device and uh, host class are uh, supported. And also, um, many example applications are included in such as a NATX shell, uh, which is very uh, useful for debugging and web server as well. And so you can easily uh, try uh, these applications with a NATX. And from here, uh, let me talk about the Sony Audio products based on uh, NATX and feasibility studies. As I mentioned in um, in 2013, I proposed to use NATX for some of the products. At that time, uh, we used M7. And so not Cortex M7, of course, uh, so based processor to port uh, NATX because our uh, audio products has used this processor. However, uh, this processor's SRAM size was so small, so uh, we used NATX to QMU as well to port proprietary port stack. And in 2014, we ported NATX to a new processor, which is called uh, LCA 23450, and continued uh, product development. And uh, so finally, in uh, September 2015, uh, we released the first NATX-based audio product. And these are our audio products. And in 2015, we released two voice recorders and one music player. And after that, we released uh, many other products, so including wires, uh, headphones, which support Bluetooth, SDP, 
uh, SYNC and uh, HSP and HFP. And this year, we also released a um, voice recorder, but not listed in this slide. And these are um, several reasons why we chose uh, Natex for our audio products. The most important point was uh, POJIX and the RIVC support. As I mentioned, uh, we have much experience uh, with uh, Linux and Android before, so I thought uh, we should apply uh, our uh, software development approaches, even if uh, we use uh, Natex for operating system. And with this, uh, we were able to um, reduce existing uh, software and uh, also uh, reduce our uh, learning costs. And also, uh, ELF uh, support was very important for us because uh, some older products uh, do not have uh, SPF flash for uh, to reduce cost. And uh, so we had to divide uh, one uh, big um, application to uh, small um, applications. And other items such as uh, driver framework and uh, uh, framework support and Linux like configuration support was uh, very useful for us as well. And this slide shows uh, um, processor features which we are using for uh, our audio products. This processor has a dual Cortex M3 so running at 160 megahertz and has a 1.6 megabyte internal SM. Kind of products uh, use only single core, however. Uh, I've been uh, studying if uh, we can use as a secondary core uh, in SMP mode to increase uh, more performance. The reason why um, I'm being studying SMP with this process is that uh, we want to use a run uh, existing application in SMP mode to scale performance. However, this processor does not have a CPU cache, so we need to confirm um, perform, uh, confirm, uh, performance effects on um, memory contention. I think it's a very uh, challenging theme uh, because NatX is not just a scheduler, but it has uh, many features such as networking and also includes uh, application as well. This slide uh, introduces um, uh, my approach is to support SMP uh, on the, this processor. So firstly, I ported uh, existing driver to our latest NatX. Then uh, I implemented SMP related code. Usually, uh, ARM supports a load exclusive and the store exclusive operation to implement spin lock. However, this uh, processor does not support uh, these operations. So uh, we had to implement it with uh, hardware mutex inside of the processor. So um, the next topic is networking. So uh, motivation of uh, adding to networking was to confirm a NatX network stack feasibility. Actually, um, this uh, on semiconductor evaluation board does not have an uh, Ethernet but uh, has a USB. So uh, I decided to use a uh, USB uh, remote and disk driver with uh, this evaluation board to test uh, audio streaming in SMP mode. So as you can see at uh, this slide, uh, NatX supports many uh, networking features uh, such as uh, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, uh, USB remote endes, and IPv4 and V6. Of course, you can use a BSD uh, socket API as well as a uh, select and pour interface to wait for events from that socket. So um, it's very easy to port a socket-based application to NatX. So then uh, I started to test uh, USB uh, remote and this ways on semiconductors board. So there are, uh, but there are several issues at that time. For example, uh, data cooperation in the USB remote driver, and no TCP window control, and no HTTP streaming support in NX player, which is a uh, media player uh, on NatX. So um, I had to fix uh, these bugs and added our uh, features. And now uh, it works well in SMP mode, 
and which uh, I will show you a demo video later. So uh, another networking study in um, broad span, uh, personal area networking. As I mentioned before, um, in our older products, we've been uh, using a uh, proprietary board stack. But in this study, uh, I chose a um, BT stack by our uh, blue kitchen because Maybe okay? Okay. Uh, but in this study, uh, I chose the BD stack and, uh, because uh, it's open source and free for normal commercial use. To run our board span on NatX, I added the uh, tap mode to uh, NatX tune driver, so which is a similar way to uh, run our board networking on Linux. Uh, this slide shows an actual uh, software stack uh, to run a BT stack on NatX. This uh, orange box shows a um, BT stack uh, components by Blue Kitchen. And blue box uh, shows a NatX software components. And NatX uh, network stack can communicate with a BT stack via a uh, tune driver. And actual interface name is uh, BNAP0. This means that uh, Blue Bluetooth network encapsulation protocol zero. So um, this, uh, the next topic is uh, ABS devices UK. Uh, so motivation of uh, this study is to uh, port, uh, uh, to confirm OSS portability with uh, large software systems. Because uh, this SDK consists of uh, many open source software components such as uh, embed TLS, MG, HTTP2, and Libcard, and so on. So approaches for porting this SDK uh, in is uh, firstly uh, build and run a SDK on Linux and understand uh, how each component works on Linux. Then port each component to Linux and also implement some missing components such as a media player but with a minimal efforts. And finally, uh, I reduce a runtime memory on Linux, uh, on NatX. So um, this just shows their audio signal for inside the SDK. As you, you can see on the uh, left hand side, hand side and audio input format is uh, PCM uh, 16 kilohertz, uh, 16 bit, and more. And with this SDK, uh, you can see your own keyword detection. However, in this study, I decided not to use uh, keyword detection, but to use a push to talk. So communication between uh, the SDK and Alexa service is uh, transported with HTTP2 over TLS. And uh, voice data from Alexa is encoded in MPEG audio format. This is uh, uh, 24 kilohertz as a monorail and 48 kbps. And to decode uh, MPEG audio, I decided to use a hardware decoder, so inside the processor. And as I mentioned uh, before, um, ABS device SDK consists of uh, several open source components, so such as uh, embed TLS and NG HTTP2 and so on. So here, uh, I had to implement our, our media player and micro upper because uh, GStreamer for Linux is too big to port it. However, uh, total cost size uh, of uh, this system was about uh, 3.6 uh, megabytes, so including uh, Linux kernel, uh, not X kernel. So to run the SDK, I had to use uh, uh, SPI flash in XIP mode. So um, this is a network topology to test uh, ABS, ABS device SDK. To connect to uh, board to network, we need a uh, remote uh, host PC. And also to connect uh, the internet, I use uh, my iPhone. And in the demo video, I will show you where ABS device SDK works so with a NatX writer. 
So the next topic is uh, spray sense. So in 2018, uh, Sony released a new uh, low power processor called spray sense for IoT products. And this processor has uh, six Cortex M4F in application domain, and also uh, high power, point, uh, power domain control and the sensor control unit with a large firewall and GNS as position features. And these hardware features are, are implemented in very small package. And we, Sony also released a SpreSense SDK as well, so which is available on GitHub now. And this SDK includes many drivers uh, for SpreSense as well as uh, middleware and sample applications. However, the kernel version uh, is a bit old. So um, since uh, June of this year, uh, we've been contributing a uh, presence related uh, driver code to the NetX upstream. And this slide shows the latest upstream streaming status. And as you can see, uh, this slide, uh, most of the driver code has already been merged to the upstream. So this is very important for both of the uh, NatX community and Sony. And uh, for NatX community, uh, they can try the latest uh, NatX uh, code with a uh, process evaluation board. And for Sony, uh, so we can easily merge the latest NatX uh, release uh, to our SDK in the near future to reduce maintenance cost. The next topic is also Wi-Fi. So in this study, I implemented Wi-Fi driver for GS2200 IM, so which supports 11 bg and at 2.4 gigahertz. So this processor, uh, this driver supports uh, both uh, uh, station mode and access point mode. So to implement a driver, the NATX user SOC feature was used. So here, uh, so what is a user SOC? So the, uh, the answer is that uh, it's a user space you know, networking stack APIs so defined in NATX. And user space uh, demo and how provide uh, NATX networking. And this allows a uh, seamless integration of hardware provided TCP IP stack to uh, NATX. So um, this is an actual uh, use case for web, for web server uh, example. In this study, we can reuse uh, existing application such as uh, Telnet D and the web server, and persons can be accessed from so, Firefox for on open and to access files on micro SD card. So for your reference, I've just uh, put a code size of uh, this use case and uh, compared to a uh, remote and this configuration, so which uh, uses a normal TCP IP stack on NatX. And the uh, code size uh, was almost 10% uh, uh, code size was uh, reduced with using a uh, user SOC based driver. So the last topic is a NatX workshop. So on July 16th and 17th of this year, uh, the first international also workshop of NATX was held in the Netherlands. In this workshop, so over uh, 40 people joined. And we, Sony, also attended this workshop and talked uh, our activities. And at the workshop, so many applications so such as a drone and drone and drones and robotics and uh, sensors and cube satellites were introduced. And of course, um, we also introduced uh, our audio products and the presence at the workshop. And at the workshop, so many developers talk about that, so why uh, they chose Natex for their products, for their applications. And of course, uh, the real time is very important keyword because uh, some uh, so drone and robotics are very important to use uh, so real timeness. 
And however, as you can see uh, these slides, so many developers, including, including us, use Linux to develop and to test a software. And after that, uh, so they deploy and develop the software on NatX. So the portability and the scalability are very important so for uh, software development. And that's why uh, they chose so NatX for their applications. So uh, finally, I'd like to show you, you were, so demo videos. So the order is changed from the order I, which I uh, talked uh, this uh, talk, but uh, because it's a complex it's order. So first one is uh, ABS device SDK. So, so first is uh, start ABS test. So you can see uh, many logs, so HTTP stream is uh, running. And so in background, uh, I run a uh, media player as well. And can you see? Right now in East Queen Anne, it's 52 degrees Fahrenheit with clear skies and sun. Tonight's forecast has clear skies with a low of 35 degrees. So, and now check uh, task rest and free memory. And so, so many ta tasks is actually running. And so it consumes uh, almost one megabyte uh, memory. And next is uh, Spress and Spress Wi-Fi. And it's um, uh, setup is very uh, long, so I uh, change the uh, playback speed. And from, the, uh, from here, uh, it's normal speed. So turn it to Spress, you can see here, uh, your name is Spress and login again, and this PS, and run our web server, uh, access web server on Spressence via uh, Firefox. And you can see a JPEG file. This file is stored on a micro SD card on Spressence. And this uh, MP3 file is also on uh, MP3 uh, micro SD card on Spressence. And uh, Firefox is accessing, so downloading this MP3 file and playback. And next is audio stream in SMP. This is uh, user using a HTTP audio streaming in remote address. And the CPU clock changes automatically. So it depends on uh, uh, GPU load. And run a, a command, it'll be a turn up. And CPU clock goes a bit higher so while executing commands. And stop run commands and clock goes down. And then uh, clock goes high and while executing commands. and curl goes down after stopping our, our commands. And then uh, run a busy uh, loop. And just a uh, busy loop on only so CPU zero. So you can see here, uh, CPU zero's uh, idle ratio is down to zero. And then uh, run busy loop on CPU one. In this case, uh, you can see here, at idle one, so CPU idle for CPU one is uh, going to zero. And run busy loop. Or in this case, a uh, busy loop runs on CPU zero or one. So uh, both idle ratio is not zero. And finally, uh, so run two busy loops. And in this case, a uh, CPU scores high, but uh, both uh, CPU uh, idle is going to zero. So and that's uh, all of uh, this demonstration video. So that's all uh, from uh, my uh, talk today. So is there any questions so far? It's uh, so very quick to talk uh, this session and maybe uh, cover so many topics in uh, this session. So is there any questions? If you have, uh, you can. Pass our mic.
more questions? Ah, OK. Uh, what uh, kind of uh, tool chain do you use? Uh, do you have to to make your own uh, cross compilation tool chain to use the, the Nutix, libc and uh, and so on, or is it uh, uh, a self-contained project and you can use a standard uh, GCC or? So you are, uh, you are talking about. This. So you are talking about the tool chain or something? Ah, sorry, I forgot to uh, mention about the tool chain. Uh, I'm, uh, we are using uh, the normal so DCC uh, tool chain. And currently, uh, uh, in the product, I think uh, DCC version 5.3 was used. But currently, uh, we are using uh, DCC 7 or DCC 8 for, to test this, uh, this NUTX. On, both uh, on semi-context as board as well and uh, uh, presence board as well. So, so we are using a GCC based uh, compiler. Is that okay? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there any other questions? So, uh, so thank you for joining this session.